Hello, welcome to the Center Code video talking about testing the full experience for your participants. In this video, we're going to go over checking your work, basically taking a look at testing as a whole and making sure that your implementation and your project are set up and ready to go according to how you want it. So in this video, you'll learn how to review the applicant to test your process for your project and make sure that everything is set up and ready to go in that regard. Then we're also going to talk about where to check for and correct common user experience issues. So with regards to the Nighthawk project story, this is part of the launch step. This is getting everything ready to go and making sure that you're all well and good before actually promoting your testers and giving them full access to your project. So to start off, we're going to talk about testing your promotion process. First off, you definitely want to take a look at your notice chain within your project. Next, you want to review the promotion process, so how your testers are actually going to be bumped from being applicants to full-fledged testers, or from the waiting team or whatever you have situated to being full-fledged participants. Next, we're going to check the user experience and the interface utilizing a test account. And finally, we're going to adjust settings as necessary after we've reviewed everything and found any faults or flaws in our plan. We're going to go back and make any necessary changes. So with that said, we're actually going to start off in the project homepage of the Nighthawk Beta project. And from here, the next steps you take really depend on your implementation. If you plan on promoting your testers manually, using the macro that we have in place in the template, the one that promotes from a new applicant to a brand new tester, then we'll cover that shortly. If you plan on utilizing the automated macro that we created in a previous video, then we'll go over that process as well. Before we get started, like I mentioned before, we definitely want to take a look at the notice chain within our project to make sure we understand how this whole process should all go down. So, jumping into your project tools, look at your notices, and you can see that full notice chain for this particular project. So, the next important thing to note is using that preview notice process link. So in this case, we want to take a look at it from the new applicant's point of view. So in the new applicant point of view, they'll go through the application survey, and then based on their responses, that auto-promote notice will promote them to be a beta tester and bypass the block notice. If they are not promoted, on the other hand, they will simply be blocked and prevented from accessing the full project. Again, looking at the tester perspective, when they become a tester, they'll go through the non-disclosure agreement, participation agreement, They'll choose a test platform and then go through those final content notices. Now with regards to the manual promotion, you'll already have your testers on the applicant team, so they'll already have filled out the application survey before you get to them, and then you'll qualify those users based on their application survey, pull up a list, and then promote them manually. As such, they won't go through this exact process. They will have already seen the block notice, and they would have been waiting at the thank you for applying until you promote them. Once you promote them, then they'll go through the remainder of the notice chain starting at the non-disclosure agreement and closing out at arriving at the home page. When we do the automatic promotion, on the other hand, the user will be a brand new user to this project, they'll see the application survey, and then behind the scenes they'll be promoted, wherein they will be automatically brought through the non-disclosure agreement and so forth, or they will not be promoted and be kept blocked by that block notice. So to start this off, we're actually going to go ahead and discuss the manual promotion method. So in order to do that, you need to know what user accounts you're going to be promoting and have an idea of what credentials they're going to be promoted by. First off though, you want to have a test account set as a new applicant. So in this case we're going to access user management and pull up that tester account. You'll have many many more if you follow these steps and included recruitments or included your list of testers already into the new applicant group. You'll have a longer list. In my case though, I have this one user. I'm going to go ahead and perform this action and you can see my Joe tester account. Now in this case, in order to manually promote this user, I'm actually going to check the user that I want to include, and you might have a list of any number of testers. You just want to pick your test account to start with, then you're going to choose your action. So clicking on the action gives you a drop-down menu, and you're going to choose a macro here. So in this case, we want to utilize the Promote to Testers macro. And this is one that we already have in the template, so you should have it in your template as well, unless it was removed. If it was removed, you can go create a new one, or you can just do this a little bit slower way by adding a user to a team, and then sending them an email separately. Basically, the Promote to Testers macro does all of that at once. So in this case, I'm going to promote Joe to a tester, and hit Go. So you can see here, you have the list of affected users. So you have a check here, so you can make sure these are the right users you want to promote. And in this case, it's just my test account, so that's perfect. Scrolling down, you can see the macro steps here. And the first step is going to be emailing the user. So this view here shows you the email, including a project link to bring them directly into the project itself and some additional information that they might need to understand what this correspondence is all about. The final consideration there is the Adjust User Teams action, and in this case we're adding the user to the testers team. 
and removing them from the new applicants team, accepted applicants team, and the rejected applicants team. So technically you could run this across anyone on any of these teams and they would then be promoted to a full-fledged tester and removed from all those applicant teams. And in this case those applicant teams are served block notices, so we need to remove them from those teams for them to gain access to the project. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and confirm the macro. Now as part of your testing there are a few things to check. First off, let's take a look at that Joe account. Gain access to their user summary. Scroll down and make sure they're on the right team. So there you go. Scrolling back up, you want to access your project tools. And we can check the email tool here. And actually see about if an email was sent correctly. In this case, I just want an email that was sent after about three minutes ago, four minutes ago. I'm going to hit next. So there you go. We can take a view of this particular email and see that it went to the demo plus test, so that would be the Joe test email account. Scrolling down you can see that all of those dynamic tags filled out appropriately, so the user and first name there being Joe, the project link, etc. So we can see here that this particular email went out successfully. If you wanted to have it resend or send it to yourself or something of that nature, you can perform those actions accordingly. So the final step to making sure that this promotion worked as you expected is to log out and log back in as the test account. So in this case I'm going to log in as Joe and then access the Nighthawk project. So we're shown the non-disclosure agreement. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of that and sign it. Clicking I agree allows me to move forward. We have a participation agreement. I'm going to go ahead and agree. Now in this case I need to choose a test platform to apply using the assigned test platforms which is part of an enterprise feature. In this case I'm going to choose my cell phone and continue and then continue clicking through the additional notices in the notice chain. Once complete I land on the project homepage. So you can see here, this is the actual project homepage view as seen by a participant. So in this case, you have your welcome message here. You can see the test platform that you've chosen for this particular test. You have your due later, upcoming to do items. They have access to all of those tabs across the top. And finally, they can view all the items in the left-hand menu, including submitting feedback, tracking feedback that they've submitted. They have a list of their individual tasks that they have access to via roles. And then the different resources available to them, including forums, project news, and they can review their agreements. Alright, and that all looks good. So for the next portion of this video, I'm actually going to bump Joe's access back down to being a new applicant and reset his notices so that we can then test the automated portion. So after I do all this, I'm going to go ahead and log out and log back in as Joe. Access the Nighthawk project. As you can see, since I'm coming in as an applicant, I see the application survey. Now in this case, Joe had already taken it and I reset the notice for him to see it again, so I'm actually going to have some saved responses here. Your testers will fill out this application survey, and then the notice macro that follows will hinge its actions based on their responses. Once this is filled out appropriately, the user will hit submit and move forward, and then Joe will seamlessly step through the process of being promoted, unbeknownst to him, and gain full access to the project. Now again, we'll step through this notice chain here, and land right on the project homepage. It looks to me like everything went just fine, exactly as I expected it. So we're going to go ahead and talk about some common issues that you might run into when you're testing your project. First off is the no project access problem. That happens sometimes whenever project managers create a new team, but forget to give that team access to the project. To fix that, simply jump into your project tools, access your static project roles, and adjust them accordingly. Be sure to check that the appropriate team has the access project role turned on. Another issue that commonly happens is blocked project access. So in that case, the user is confronted with a block notice, possibly a block notice that they should have been promoted past. In this case, most likely the user was not successfully promoted. If you utilize an automated method or a manual method, just basically go in and double check that the user account was promoted and has bypassed that block notice. If it seems that the user is on the correct team, check the block notice itself. You may have turned it on for an entire team type instead of a single team. Uh, just basically double check that it's being served to the right group. One other common issue that arises when dealing with new teams and your resources is missing resource links in the left-hand menu. To fix that, you want to definitely take a look at the resource itself and make sure that its roles are set up accordingly. For example, if a survey isn't showing up in the left-hand menu, make sure that the survey's roles allow for team access like you would expect it. Additionally, if the concern is with submitting your feedback, for example, or tracking bug reports or something of that nature, first check the feedback roles and make sure that the roles are turned on for that particular team and then check the categories and workflow for that feedback type 
to make sure that the user has access to workflow. If the user has no effect on workflow, then Connect knows not to provide them with a link to submit their feedback because they have no bearing on feedback according to your workflow. Giving them access to the new status, for example, will show that submit link in the left-hand menu. A final common issue and consideration to make is with limited or low participant activity. Whenever you're worried about the participant activity within your project, there are a few things to keep in mind. Our best practices dictate that you try and keep your tester engaged. Give them some sort of next steps. Don't just allow them into your project and then let it stagnate from there. You want to keep them active and continually coming back to your project. It's one of the reasons why we have the daily journals and that getting started task list to get your users engaged in your site and participating more heavily. If you find that your project activity is starting to trail off, try and keep your users engaged. Send them an email asking them to revisit a certain aspect of your tool or provide specific feedback. Possibly open up forums if you're not using them before to encourage discussion, something of that nature. So in this video, we covered reviewing the applicant to tester process for your project, making sure the promotion process works as you expected it to, that the user steps through the notice chain accordingly, and that all of your links are showing up in the left-hand menu. We also talked about checking for and correcting some common user experience problems, including missing links in the left-hand menu, missing project access, or low participation. Of course, we have more videos coming up pertaining to other launch steps and finally getting those users fully promoted into your test, so stay tuned.